Hey guys, we're going to be tying the zertle bug today. So a lot of people who are really familiar with the local fishing here are going to recognize the zertle bug. We have literally sold hundreds of dozens of these this year. Hard to keep up with the demand, so I figured it's a simple tie. I'm going to show you how to tie these today. People, whenever we post a picture of this, We'll always get some comment like, oh, that's a great sculpin pattern. And then someone's like, oh, it looks just like a crayfish or that looks like this nymph. And the answer is yes, right? It looks like all kinds of different bugs, insects, um, minnows, whatever it might be that trout are eating. And it's just a great generic buggy looking pattern, which is why it's so effective. Think about a slump buster and Pat's rubber legs if they had a baby get the zerta bug. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna to tie these on a jig hook similar to that jig retriever we've been talking about. Let's it ride hook point up. And this fly is really effective fished at a dead drift, whether that is with a tight line technique or under an indicator. When this is just kind of tumbling with the stream along the bottom, it's really effective, does a good job at imitating, like you said, crayfish bouncing on the bottom, a sculpin, uh, those winter days when fish are really picky, don't seem to want to chase something, drifting this in front of their face is really hard for them to not eat. So we're going to work on that fly a little bit just because it is so effective, so easy to tie. I'm going to tie it in these natural colors, but it, it's great in like a all black, purples, you could tie it in all kinds of different colors. One thing I want to mention before we get started, I'm going to be tying on one of these Renzetti ruby tip bobbins. It's going to be a little bit tough to see there in the frame, but these bobbins actually have a ruby tip insert. Really, really smooth when you're using this bobbin, and, and more so than just how it feels in your hand. When you get a smooth tip in your bobbin, it's really good on your thread. Whenever you get burrs and stuff from a bad tip in a bobbin, it can help cut your thread. If you're having issues where your thread gets all sparse and blows up on you, that could be an issue. So investing in a good smooth bobbin not only is more fun to tie with, but you won't have to worry about your thread as much. That being said, a lot of you might like to use lead wire or your ultra wire or whatever it is in a bobbin. Make sure you don't use that in your good bobbin. It's worth investing in a lead wire bobbin. Uh, Renzetti actually makes one of those, just a really affordable bobbin that's made for harsher products like wire versus your thread. So making sure you have a really smooth ceramic or ruby tip bobbin can sometimes make all the difference. So we're gonna jump into this and uh, show you the Zertle Bug. All right guys, so here is the Zertle Bug. Tying this one in kind of a natural color. You just got pretty much tan in all the different pieces of this fly. We've got black and tan on the bead and the body, tan legs, tan tail. You can tie this fly in a lot of different colors. Here is a black and olive version that I tie as well. Rust is a great color. Anything sculpin colored, crayfish colored, a lot of different forage bugs and insects and minnows that you're imitating here. So a lot of those natural colors make a, a great fly. We're gonna start with the jig hook. So this is the XT500 Jig 60 from Umqua. Really affordable hook, but it's a great hook. I tie a lot of my jig hooks on it. It pairs really well with these fooling mill beads. I'm using a 532nd for this size 10 hook. You can go a little bit bigger, especially if you use a bigger hook. Sometimes I'll tie it on like an eight or a six just to have some variety in my box, right? You wanna have some different colors, some different sizes to be able to mix things up. You know how it can be with, you know, one color just seems to work better than others some days and making sure that you have all those different options um, to be able to mix it is super important. I'm using a Danville's Flat Wax in tan. It's a great thread, it lays really flat, so it's easy to wrap along the hook really quickly, but you can also really tie in those materials nice and tight. So I got my black slotted bead there on the hook. I'm gonna take my thread, I'm just gonna go ahead and start laying down some wraps to cover up the shank. 
tie in with that Renzetti bob and I was talking about earlier. It's super slick, makes for a really easy, fun tie. One little trick here with slotted beads, you gotta make sure that it gets up on the front of the hook and secure so that it orients itself correctly. If you take your thumb and index and just pinch right behind the hook, it gives you a nice little gap. You can tie in quick, build up your thread dam right behind the bead and get it in place. So that's one thing I like to do. I usually will do that first thing and get everything set. So I'm gonna take my thread back. I'm gonna drop it right about at the barb of the hook uh, to tie in our material. So we're gonna be taking this fly fish food, stone fly chenille, black and tan on this one. They call it coffee black, makes a really good color. And basically at this point, all we're doing is essentially tying a Pat's rubber legs. So we're gonna take that material, we're gonna take some legs in a second and tie them on there. So I'm gonna take this material and what I'm gonna do is right on the end where I want to tie that in. I'm going to take my fingernails and I'm just going to pull some of that material off to give myself a nice open thread that I can lock down on, wrap back, make sure I have that material in good and secure, just barely to the bend of the hook. I'm going to work my thread back up to the bead. I'm just going to take that material and we're going to go ahead and start building our body. So as I wrap that chenille up, I'm gonna take it right to where I stop my thread, just a little over halfway. This is where I'm gonna tie in those rubber legs. So we wanna make sure we have some room to still put our collar up above it. And then I can just take that extra material, and just pull it off to the side where it'll be out of my way. Next up, we're gonna take some legs. I'm using the Life Flex leg and body material. That's a black one, looks good. I'm gonna actually go with a, a tan color just to bring out some of the, the lighter parts of this fly. The thing that is really nice about these specific rubber legs is they're flat. So it's actually a pretty light, easy rubber to tie with, but doesn't add a lot of bulk to the fly, yet it still gives it a lot of movement and motion. So I'm gonna take that and just run it right along the hook and hold it in place with my thumb. Start with a couple light wraps. And then you can take those materials, kind of pull them either way if you need to, get it secured where you want, and then I'm gonna add a couple tight wraps to hold it in place. So I'm gonna do that on one side, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing here on the other side. Couple light wraps, check my positioning, pull it tight. And then I'm gonna just advance the thread up to the front. Sometimes my rubber legs will be a little bit longer than I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off just to make, put material around a little easier. When you're working with rubber legs or something that you may trim at the end, always go a little bit on the, the side of too much material because you can always clip more off, but cannot add it back. So got our legs tied in there. I'm just going to take my body material. I'm going to do one wrap over the middle. And then when I come up under it this time, I'm going to take those legs and just pull them back. You'll see how it kind of throws the legs back behind the fly and do a couple wraps on either side of that material. Pull it tight just to secure it. And then I'm going to clip that nice and tight. Give it a couple more wraps just to secure it. We're good to go. So basically, at that point, we've tied a, a patch rubber leg without the tail, essentially. So it's almost like two flies in one. All that's left is to throw the tail on. The tail, one thing about zonker and rabbit is it's a really, really fine fur. And so in the water, even when your fly is not moving, the water really pulses those materials and, and gets them moving. So it makes a really realistic life-like material. So that is just a standard squirrel zonker. Um, I'm timing the pine. This one's tan. 
They also make zonkers in a micro size where it will just have a thinner zonker to it. If you're tying a smaller version of this fly, that could be a good option just so there's not too much bulk as you're tying. All right, so got that ready to go. When you look at this clump of zonkers, when you take it out of the bag, a lot of times it's gonna be pretty curly and tangled up like that. So if you take your zonker and you grab it and you pull it tight, it stretches a little bit. And as you pull it, you can actually straighten that material out a little bit and it's gonna make it just a little bit easier to deal with as you're tying it on the hook. So I'm gonna go ahead, orient that fly like it would ride in the water, hook point up. I'm gonna take this material and I'm just gonna measure out about how much I think I need. If you look at those hairs, you'll see that they are directional. You wanna make sure that they're pointing behind the fly towards the back of the fly to make sure that's the correct direction. So gonna just kind of eyeball it. Once again, you wanna err on the side of a little bit too much material because you can always go back in and trim it. You can't add more zonker back on. So I'm gonna tie it a little longer. I'm just gonna check. Looks about the length and the proportion I want. It's pretty much about twice the, the length of that hook shank. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line it up and find out where the bend of the hook touches the zonker because we're gonna actually poke the, the hook right through there. If you want, you can take a little Sharpie, put a dot there so you know where to, to run it through. A lot of times I will just take my thumb, pinch it, I'm gonna pull my fly out of the vise, and I'm just gonna poke it right through that zonker strip. So I set my point of the hook right on, pop it right through. As you can see, I just ran it right through that zonker. That's gonna be a little easier to see here in a second as I put it back in the vise. There you go. So I've got the zonker strip secured to my fly. I'm gonna pull down my rubber legs. And just make sure everything looks good. You'll see it secured there. And what I'm gonna do, this extra material that I have up above the fly, I'm gonna take my scissors and cut tight to the zonker. And it's just gonna give me a little flat spot on the zonker strip to tie on my thread. So I'm gonna pull that material tight, stretch it the way I want it. Give it just a light wrap or two. Check it again, make sure I have it in the place I want. And then we're gonna do a couple tight wraps there. I'm gonna pull my tag forward and do a couple in front. Now that we have it pretty secure, I'm gonna come in here, clip the excess tail off. You'll notice there's a little tag right there in front of the bead. I like to leave that because I can actually come in here with my thread and it just gives me a little something extra. I'll do a bunch of wraps to really tighten down and hold that material on because there's nothing worse than when you're catching a ton of fish on your fly and the tail falls off. So I got that down and grab my whip finish, get a few good turns there, clip it off. And then at this point, you can finish it with whatever you'd like, a head cement, a glue. I like to use um, Sally Hansen, hard as nails. You can get it at really any like beauty store. I usually try and sneak it in the cart when my wife's getting stuff at Target. Just gonna run it on there. And then I'll take a, a bodkin or just a piece of plastic from my rubber legs or something and spread it through the thread wraps. And there we have it. Hook point up, rubber legs, tungsten bead, gets down deep, very effective fly, easy to tie in a lot of different variations, but also a really quick, simple tie.